Go. Hello, I'm Bill Kettenbrink with Bamco Surplus Process Equipment. We buy and sell used process equipment for the petrochemical industry, primarily laboratory equipment. Today I want to demonstrate a Herzog 329-330 automatic flashpoint tester. This here is the Herzog automatic flashpoint tester. First thing we're going to do is we're going to do a flash test on diesel. We've got a little bit of diesel here. I'm going to take the cup out. It's got a little lock right here. You unlock the cup and pull it out. And then if you can see, there's a little line in there. So what you want to do is you want to fill your diesel up to that line. Then you put your diesel sample in the flash cup. Lock it down. And we'll put the lid back on this diesel sample. Put it out of here out of the way. Next thing you want to do is you want to reach over here, and this is the flash cut or the flash sensor. We'll set that down there. It's got a little groove right there, if you can see. And we'll put that groove right on there, and that'll fit down on there, and it'll be tight, so you ain't got no vapors. Next thing you want to do is you want to put your flash arm over here and pop that down like that. Then you got your stirring rod, and that just goes in here and then in here, like so. Then we're going to turn it on. And you can say it says Herzog MP329-330 version 6.00E. Uh, now it's got method A and method, uh, meth method B. We've got it set on method A right now. Uh, the difference between method A and method B has to do with the stir speed. So what we want to do is we want to first want to hit start, and then it's going to say uh, your number. We're just going to put in number one. Or we're going to hit start again. It's going to sample number. We're going to put in sample one, and we're going to hit start again. Now it's going to ask for our, uh, estimated flash point. I estimate this diesel to flash at 145 degrees Fahrenheit. So we put in 145 degrees Fahrenheit and we hit start. Now I ask, do you want to start to test? And you hit start again. And yes, and it'll start. Now this little flash will light. There you go, you see it light up and, and try and do a sample flash. Now what will happen? We we'll just sit here and uh, our estimated flash is 145, and right now it's on 74. So now basically all you got to do is walk away uh, and go do other lab tests if that's what you want to do. And the machine will work by itself. And once it gets to a certain point, it'll start dipping down into the flash cup and trying to flash. And as soon as it flashes, the alarm will go off and say, hey, flash point is met. And you can see here that. These little lights mean that it, this is heating, so this is getting hot. And once it reaches temperature, uh, it'll start flashing. But anyway, uh, this particular machine is a little older. Uh, we purchased this. It had a bad uh, cup arm. We replaced that. And the cup uh, wasn't working right, so we uh, modified it and got it working right. So. That's a pretty good flashpoint tester now. Typically, uh, to buy these new, they're probably, uh, I would say, $25,000, uh, $30,000. This one, we'd sell for $5,500. So that's quite a savings. Uh, matter of fact, even a manual flashpoint tester new is $3,000. So you know, for a few couple thousand more, you can have a really nice uh, automatic flashpoint tester. We also sell other equipment. We'll kind of show you. We've got a Cindy, uh, which is a, a sulfur of diesel. It ch checks low sulfur of diesel fuels. And then we, next to it, we've got an ISL uh, freeze point tester. Uh, over here, we've got an edge light. 5973 mass spec with a 6890 gas chromatograph set beside it. 
in up there on the shelf. We've got some four place balances. Uh, and kind of we've also had some other types of flashpoint testers. We've got some Tanakas, uh, which are also really good machines. Uh, we got an MCRT, which is a microcarbon residue tester made by Alcor. That's a real nice. That one's just been rebuilt, so it's uh, that's rebuilt and ready to go. Manufactured, rebuilt, so that's a nice machine. And then we got another Tanaka flashpoint. But anyway, as you can see on the on this flashpoint, it's it, the temperature is going up, so pretty much we just got to sit here and, and wait and uh, watch it go up. Now if this was a manual flashpoint tester, what you would do is you would have a thermometer and every two degrees you would have to manually make the flash go, you know, uh, dip the flash and it would, you know, and as soon as it flashed, but you'd have to sit here and watch the every two degrees. So nice thing about this is you set it up, you walk away, you go do other things. Uh, like if you got to do a density, we also have a Anton Pollard DMA 48 density meter. Uh, you know, so if your lab's set up and you got to do a density and you've got to do a sulfur test, all you got to do is set up your flash, set it up, go on to the next machines and uh, do things. We got titrators as well for uh, coleometric titration, uh, moisture and moisture and crude and stuff like that. Anyway, back here to the flashpoint tester. Uh, it's up to 83 degrees now. Once it gets to probably about 90, uh, this uh, mechanism will start dipping down and trying to flash. And then every two degrees after that, it'll flash until we actually reach the estimated flashpoint. So if you were setting up a lab and uh, you had to buy all new equipment, I would imagine you'd spend millions of dollars. Uh, you could set up a lab with a flashpoint tester, a freeze point tester, a, a sulfur and fuel, uh, sulfur, uh, low sulfur and diesel tester, a mass spec. And you can buy all of this for under a hundred thousand. So, you know, that's a big difference. And the thing about this machine is we also, it, we also have parts. We, we have extra arms. We have extra uh, flash uh, mechanisms. We have extra cups. We have ele extra electronics. So even though this is an older machine, uh, we still, you know, you can come to us for parts. If you buy it, it breaks down. We can either fix it or we can supply you the parts so that you can fix it. Now Herzog was purchased by PAC, so they're no longer in business. PAC, uh, I think, still sells some parts. Uh, not a lot. I know they still sell the probes uh, for this machine. But, you know, for the price that you're paying for it, uh, if you put it on your bench and you run... 10 flashes a day in a year's time, uh, it's paid for itself, plus you got a lot of extra profit. Uh, you can't say that about a brand new machine. You put it on the bench and you're going to have to run a whole lot of flashes to pay for it. Anyway, you can see it's starting to heat up pretty rapid now. It's at uh, 101, 102, so it's, uh, it's starting to heat up pretty rapid here pretty quick it should start to uh, dip down and try to flash. I think at a probably 109 it might try to start flashing. Anyway we're located in Texas City, Texas. Uh, we have four warehouses full of equipment uh, and we, like I said we do process equipment. We've got pumps and motors uh, stuff like that, but we really like doing lab equipment. We like to repair it, we like to work on it, we like to sell it. Uh, it's kind of our niche. Uh, you know, we're at 109, 110. It should start to 
slash here, I think, any time. Anyway, like I said, we've got four warehouses on Texas Avenue. Oh, and now you can see it's starting to it lit up and it tried to flash. Now it'll, it'll do that every two degrees. Now that's at 113. Now you'll see it at 115. It's starting to glow. And at 115, it'll reach down and try to flash again. See, it's not, it's not getting a flash, so it's going to keep going up and it'll test every two degrees until it actually flashes. So we're at 117. The nice thing about this, this is not a gas flame, this is an electric flame. So some of your uh, manual flashpoint testers, you have to use gas, uh, and it's a little gas flame that dips down in it, which you really don't want open flame in a lot of labs. So this is nice. It's not an open flame, it's an electric flame. The heat is electric, so you don't have any gas except for your sample. Uh, so we're up to 122 already, 123. As you can see, the little flash dipping down each time. We're at 125. I'm pretty sure it's going to flash uh, close to 145. Uh, I think it'll go as much as 10 degrees over that before it airs out if it doesn't flash at 145. Now we're at 129. So it's heating pretty rapidly, 130. And you can see it dipping down each time, trying to flash. This is a pretty stout machine. This uh, this will give you a lot of years of use. It's uh, they're well built. You shouldn't have any problems with this machine at all. Probably the biggest problem I've seen with these, if you run a lot of flashes, is uh, burning out the the electric coil, or if your lab hands are clumsy, they'll break the probe. Uh, that happens a lot. We're at uh, 140. We should be getting a flash here pretty quick. I don't know if you can actually see the flash if you come real close. You might actually see it flash when it flashes. So that's at 143, so it should flash here pretty quick. I'm thinking right about 145. Oh, there we go. See the flash? It flashed in there. And our flash point is 145. So I called that. Anyway, uh, now you can hear the fan start to kick on to uh, cool it down. So what happens now, it'll cool down. You just remove your sample and put a new sample in and run another flash. Anyway, thank you. This is Bill Kettenbrink with Bamco Surplus Process Equipment. Thank you for watching. Uh, give us a call and we'll sell you some equipment.